And for more on this story, we're joined by Daniel Landsberg Rodriguez. He's a lecturer at Northwestern University and also the director for the Latin American region at Green Mental LLC. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. You know, as we've said, there's late word that protesters have tried to enter the Congress and are facing off with police. Uh, can you just give us some context? Uh, why have protesters been out in the streets and in such large numbers? Um, sure. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you for inviting me on the show. And more than that, uh, thank you for covering this really important story uh, that uh, a lot of international media hasn't been focusing on, uh, you know, some of the, the issues that are happening, especially in, in uh, sort of smaller emerging markets like Ecuador, but really fascinating ones. What we're seeing now uh, can't really be understood very easily in a vacuum. Uh, Ecuador is having an inflation shock, as are most places uh, around the world these days. Uh, but it's not as high as some of it, the other countries in Latin America, in part because Ecuador adopted the U.S. dollar. Uh, earlier this century, and as a result of that, has been shielded from a lot of the inflationary shocks that have hit in other countries. Uh, on top of that, you have, uh, outside of Venezuela and a few other places, some of the largest gasoline subsidies anywhere in the world in Ecuador, which are very sort of longstanding. Uh, so what we've seen uh, is that on top of the general inflation shock, uh, that has been hitting Ecuador. We've also seen uh, basically a weakening of those uh, gas subsidies, uh, which has made gas prices uh, still, they're still cheaper than in many other places, but they're, they're much more volatile. They're moving upwards much more quickly, uh, which makes it much harder for people to plan. Uh, what we're seeing right now in Quito and some of the other cities also comes from a, a long tradition uh, of, of indigenous levantamientos or, or uprisings. Uh, that uh, the indigenous population in Ecuador, they're not as numerous as in, say, Bolivia or Peru or some of the other neighbors. Uh, they're about 20 percent, uh, but they're very well organized and they're also geographically located very close to the capital, Quito. Uh, as a result of that, uh, since around 1990, we've had uh, multiple instances of large indigenous uprisings, uh, which descend on the capital uh, and uh, make it very difficult to govern. In 2019, Lenin Moreno, uh, Lasso's predecessor, was forced to uh, flee the capital uh, and basically move the seat of government to Guayaquil, which was more defensible. Uh, and I think that that's something, given the news in the Congress today, that is probably uh, uh, being considered as an option right now by the Lasso government as well. So as we just saw in that report, uh, currently there's no dialogue between the government and the protesters. What do you make of the government's uh, response to all of this? I think it's it's difficult to find anywhere in Ecuadorian history any government on the left or right having a good response to indigenous uprisings. Uh, usually uh, these uh, sorts of uh, crises have uh, ended up dragging out, paralyzing the government, affecting oil exports, and a lot of the things we're seeing now. Uh, unfortunately, they also interrupt supply chains, uh, which ends up exacerbating the inflationary pressures uh, because uh, you, you end up having fewer goods to go around and demand stays the same, uh, or if anything increases because people are worried about tomorrow more. Uh, so the, uh, I mean, essentially, Lasso offered some sort of minor concessions early on, uh, which was uh, similar to what Moreno did before him or what Gutierrez did before him. Uh, these were not accepted. Uh, the state of emergency needs to be in place for the government to be able to flee the capital. Uh, so if they want to have that as an option constitutionally, uh, that state of emergency has to be active, uh, which makes it very difficult for them to feel that their bets are in any way hedged if they uh, remove the state of emergency. Uh, so there, uh, and with that state of emergency also come curfews and a lot of other limitations on citizen rights, uh, which make it difficult for uh, the leaders of the indigenous uprising to be willing to uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, talk in good faith or assume that their counterparts are talking in good faith while those are still there. Uh, historically, what's happened is that that has made, you know, one or two very volatile weeks. Uh, at which point tempers tend to unflare a little bit uh, and you start getting a little bit more dialogue at first behind the scenes uh, and then some kind of agreement is reached. I think that okay. given the situation, Lasso's government will have to make some pretty serious concessions, uh, most likely on the side of, uh, of uh, the uh, a, a gasoline subsidies. 
uh, because there isn't that much more they can do in terms of, of inflation because it's, it's mm-hmm. on, on the food side, it's, it's a supply shock. Okay. Um, we'll have to leave it there, and we'll keep our eye on this story uh, here at France 24. Thanks so much, Daniel Lanceberg rodriguez a lecturer at Northwestern University. Thanks for your time tonight. And thank you.